Hello, everybody. I'm Cindy DeFilippo, and I am Daniel Webster Council's new Family Engagement Coordinator. And this is our membership workshop. We are talking about summer fun activities and parade best practices. And we'd love to hear your ideas too. So please send us pictures and your ideas to membership at nhscouting.org. We'd love to hear from you. And we'd love to hear the parades that you're participating in this year. Parade season is around the corner. And we know our scouts really enjoy um, participating in the parades. You feel like a celebrity, right? I know sometimes I love it too. I see friends on the sidelines and we're waving. It's a lot of fun, especially when the weather is nice. And we don't always have good luck in this part of the country, right, Tom, with the good weather? <laughs> yep. Right, I know, it's that you, you always want to, but. So we're gonna start off with summer programming and how we can uh, really use our summer programming for recruitment activities as well. So you're not doing double duty, you're kind of combining it and making it easier on your fellow uh, volunteers and leaders and your scouts too. So really for all units, you want to really pre-plan dates and times and the activities well before May, and May is right around the corner. So hopefully at your last committee meeting um, and your committee meeting uh, for the planning meeting last June, hopefully you already thought about this summer's events. So there, they just need to be kind of planned out and finalized. If they haven't been, then have a committee meeting, maybe you have a separate additional meeting with your leaders and talk about what events you'd like to see over the summer. And especially if you have an older scouting unit like Scouts BSA, Venturing, um, or Exploring, you want to meet with those scouts right away too and see what they have in mind because the older scouts really can take part in the planning and really the younger scouts too. We wanna to hear what they have fun doing and why they joined scouting. And then you can incorporate that into your summer fun activity ideas and recruiting events. So as soon as we have dates and times figured out that are available and maybe the dates and times of your own units meetings work. So if you meet during on Tuesday nights at seven during the school year, maybe you keep Tuesday nights at seven through the summer as well, because most likely those families have kept those weekly nights available because of your unit meetings. And then of course you can throw in a Saturday or Sunday here and there um, in the summer too. So once you have those dates and times, put those events immediately on your unit's calendar and hopefully you have an online calendar on your website. Um, if not, if you're using Facebook, definitely put those um, in your on your Facebook events as well and start scheduling those Facebook events um, on your Facebook pages, your public Facebook pages, so people can pre-plan because people, uh, if they haven't already planned for summer, they're definitely thinking about summer now. Um, and then you want to add those events. You know, once you have flyers and visuals and all the details, you wanna add all those events to other public community pages like the patch, or let's say here in Nashua, we have um, you know, Nashua family community page, or we have the Nashua scoop. These are public pages where there's thousands of people that visit um, you know, frequently. You really want to post the event to that page if you have a public event, because folks that signify that they're interested or that they're going will get reminders about those events. You don't have to worry about reminding them yourself. You wanna create and send flyers out to schools, especially before the end of May. Um, so if you're planning some summertime activities, even if you don't have all the details yet, you wanna make sure you get those on the flyer. You know, In May, we're gonna go to um, the local baseball game. In June, we're having a movie night. In July, we're going to go mini golfing. Even if it's as broad as that, it gives folks the you know idea that you are going to be busy this summer and the stuff that they can look forward to. And once they contact you and you have more details, you're able to share that with the uh, prospective families as well. So request those flyers through the membership and marketing hub, and we can even help you uh, figure those details out, get those printed, and then distribute them into your schools. And speaking of schools, don't forget about the private schools and the um, and the charter schools as well. A lot of times we tend to stick to one school, or maybe we think other units are promoting their their units 
in these schools. So we're only going to stick to schools A and their schools B. Call up those units and work with them. And maybe you do flyers that promote both units. And maybe you even do some activities together because there's strength in numbers, especially if folks are struggling to get leaders and volunteers to help out. Work with your other local units and combine. If that other unit meets on a Tuesday normally and you meet on a Thursday normally, well, then maybe some families will naturally go to the Thursday nights because that works better in their schedule. And then those that Wednesdays work will go to your unit. And it really works out for everybody because the goal is to get these kids into scouting, not necessarily just into your particular unit. Although we do often appreciate that when they do want to come to our unit. Um, so also distribute those flyers throughout your community. We have a lot of scout friendly um, community partners and a lot of folks, if you just call up and ask, hey, can I leave flyers? Uh, can I leave a few flyers on your community cork board or can I leave some on your counter for folks to grab? A lot of folks are more than willing to do that. Ask your chart organization, your CO, to include updates in their newsletter. So if they're a digital newsletter or if they have programs that they give out um, to their um, community members, send them your updates, whether it's monthly or weekly of what's coming up in your unit, and make sure that they help you publicize that. They're, they're there to support you as a unit, and they also, most chart organizations love to be more involved with the scouting units. So definitely have a meeting with them and see how you guys can partner up about really cross-promoting a lot of those events. And um, as I stated earlier, share, share, share on social media, on your public pages, create those Facebook events as soon as you have the dates and location and time confirmed. That way folks can add it to their calendar. Um, you can literally add the Facebook events to your own personal calendar. If you select that you're going, a lot of times that event will ask if you want to add it to your Outlook calendar or your, um, or your Gmail or you know, it can send you a reminder. And that's really handy because people will have it in their calendar. So definitely get those Facebook events out there. And um, create a summer fun flyer. You know, maybe it's not PAC-19 summer fun fly flyer. Maybe it says something like, free summer fun events for your family. And then in the lower corner, or maybe right below that, you put, you know, with PAC-19 or with Troop-19 or, you know, with our um, crew. And, um, and that way folks just see it as a free event to attend. And if they start to ask questions and wonder what scouting is about, you're there to answer the questions. So make sure you have your flyers on hand, or maybe you have a QR code, or you have a link handy that leads them to a summer fun page on your website, or it leads them to the Facebook event. So for troops in particular, um, again, plan the activities before May um, and get those flyers out. But in addition, you might wanna consider teaming up with your partnering pack, or maybe with other troops in your area if you're a smaller troop as well. Teaming up with your pack does a variety of things. Number one, you have more leaders and more kids, which makes it more fun. Number two, you're creating that relationship with those PAC families. So they'll get to know you, they'll feel comfortable. And then as they consider crossing over, they'll want to cross over into the troop and they'll already feel like they're part of the troop family. And you guys know when we all first crossed over and as our first time doing so, it can be really intimidating. And you feel like, you're just kind of a lost puppy because as a parent in the pack, you're so, so, so involved at every level, right? And then you cross over to the troop and it's almost like crickets because the kids are doing all the things and the parents are all just kind of hanging out or maybe they they drop the kid, the older kids off and go back home. So partnering with the pack early on, you know, not just for maybe one event a year is beneficial in so many ways. And that way, you know, if the younger kids bring bring their older siblings or if the older siblings bring their younger siblings, you have like a double the recruiting event because you can recruit for the pack and the troop at the same time. Again, team up with other local units and just and, and make it a big um, a big event with a lot of leaders that can help out. And, you know, in the troops, we have patrols and of course the scouts plan 
you know, the monthly, you know, patrol meetings and the troop meetings, um, you know, the court of honors even. So ask each patrol to plan out an event. So maybe patrol A plans um, June's event, patrol B plans July's event, and patrol C plans August's event. And um, it gives them the chance to become, you know, work as leaders and develop their, le their leadership um, skills that in addition takes a lot of the pressure off the adult leaders as well. Ask each patrol to create a membership goal. You know, this is really great goal setting in general, and then coming up with a plan to reach that goal. So let's say each patrol has, you know, a goal of recruiting five scouts each, you know, how are they going to go about that goal? And, you know, and, and have those steps to, to do that. And that will really encourage them to plan these really fun events and then find ways to market and advertise them, which also can help them earn some of those merit badges, right? So it's kind of this all inclusive approach to uh, program planning, recruitment, but also um, advancement as well. And then maybe they win a prize, like maybe the patrol wins an ice cream sundae party for the most recruited, or maybe even a little pizza party, depending on what your budget looks like. And then, you know, rotate leaders. So be sure you have two deep leadership at these events, you know, not all the same people going all the time. Maybe you have a schedule where you're rotating folks, so not everyone's um, always, always there. And then um, you want to host the events at your chartered organization. Um, you can host them outside, especially when the weather's nice. And then, and then you know, depending on your relationship with the chartered organization, um, hopefully you'll be able to get in there in the summer as well and plan those events well in advance. So it's also on your chartered organization's calendar. A few troop activity ideas, um, compass skill activities, first aid skills, knot tying, lashing, team building, and then of course patrol or troop games. And it doesn't have to always link directly to scouting, right? You can do a gaga ball tournament or kickball, you know, any of those fun things. You could do s'mores and campfire stories if that was something that your kids enjoyed or stargazing or an outdoor movie night. Any of those things work too, but it is nice to have um, some of the fun activities that also link back to scouting so folks can see if it's something their families would enjoy. With PACs, um, the PACs, of course, have the National Summertime PAC Award. So to achieve that, you have to host one activity each month. So again, you may want to host activities the same nights that your PAC meets just to keep it simple. And then open up those events to those non-scouting families. And again, ask each den, you know, the families from each den to plan an activity or game and get the kids in on it too. What did they like to do? What, what did they enjoy? And have them help you plan those out. And then ask a different leader or parent uh, maybe to plan each event, to head up each event. So that way those leaders and, and those volunteers are also rotating so you're not burning anyone out. And then again, you can host the event at your chartered organization, or you can meet at different places, which we'll, we'll get to later, like parks, zoos, things like that. So here are some more ideas that I listed as pack summer fun activities, but it could really be any unit, a park picnic, bike rodeo. You can chalk the walk, which is maybe at a public place, you write uh, inspirational words with chalk. So when folks are walking by, they they uh, they feel better. They feel inspired. Someone actually chalked the road out front of my house today. So this kind of spurred that idea. And things were like, you know, uh, the sayings were like, you can do it. You're awesome. Have a great day. And I just think that's a great service project in addition to being creative and thoughtful too, of course. Uh, maybe do a trash scavenger hunt. If you go to a park or if you do a hike, um, I'm on the trails. Maybe you have a scavenger hunt of, you know, types of different litter that folks can find and they collect the trash and maybe get a prize at the end for the most collected. The bears, your bear den can host a backyard carnival. This is part of the Grin and Barrett um, advancement and it's a perfect way to have fun and work on advancement at the same time. You can all attend a sporting event. A lot of times they offer patches for your group and they also can offer group discounts. We have a sporting event actually planned and it's going to be an overnight 
this summer as well. So keep an eye out for that. It's going to be really fun. Um, you can go bowling, roller skating, or host your own field day. You, you can make bird feeders. And that's a great thing to do with your partnering troop or older unit if you're a pack. Um, that is a really fun project to do together with an older buddy. There are Home Depot and Lowe's Kid Workshop Days. Um, you can take your unit to the farmer's your, or your den or patrol to a farmer's market and learn about the healthy foods. Visit a zoo. A lot of zoos have Cub Scout programs that fulfill requirements. You can make ice cream in a bag. If you Google ice cream in a bag, it's super cool. Never thought it would work. I actually did try it and it's delicious and, and it's a fun STEM project. And then maybe you plan a bingo night or a bingo day at a nursing home, which is also a great community service project, but in addition, um, really fun for the kids to plan too. So for um, a lot of our program planning resources, you can find those um, on um, the following website, which I meant to do a QR code, but I'll send you guys um, the, that joined us tonight, you will get these links. But on um, scouting.org, of course, slash programs, and then den meeting resources. They actually have videos um, that describe a bunch of different activities and what you need and the and quick, easy ways to go about um, those den meetings. And then at scouting.org slash program slash Cub Scout activities, there's more ideas there. And then on scouting.org slash programs slash Scouts BSA troop resources, there are a ton of ideas. Like I mentioned, the first aid skills, and not tying skills that actually have games that incorporate that. And they're really fun um, for the patrols. So it's not just learning to tie knots, they actually incorporate games with compass skills and, um, and everything that you can imagine. There's a lot of great ideas on um, scouting.org. So check it out. So um, does anyone have any ideas or anything that worked for them before we jump into parade best practices? Um, what worked for you guys and what are some ideas that that you may have that you might want to share when it comes to summertime events and recruiting? Anyone? Tom, you must have a good one. <laughs> Drawing blanks. All right, well, if you guys think of one, you can put it in the chat or or shout it out. Oh, there's Cynthia. All right, Cynthia, <laughs> give it to us. I knew you had one. <laughs> Just uh, really important to get the flyers to the schools early. Our, our district takes a couple of weeks to approve things. And if you wait until June, they've got a hundred million things to do. Um, so even for fall recruiting nights, we try to get those flyers in in May. Or Good earlier. Idea. Yep. We yeah. plan meeting, meeting the uh, superintendents and pleading our case in both London area and Derry. So. Yep. Yeah, great idea to, to meet with superintendents or the principals of the schools, if you can, you know, during this time, um, before the real end of the school year rush happens. And then like you said, Cynthia, putting in your summertime events, but also, you know, maybe you have a fall kickoff barbecue or something like that. Yeah. Definitely put that in uh, for me. That's a great idea. Yeah, we did that, um, the Lego Derby. Oh, yeah. That worked out really well. The kids loved it. Um, so it's like a little Lego base that comes pre-assembled with wheels, and then you build a car out of Legos on top of it, and you race it down, and they smash at the bottom, and you build it again and do it again. Oh, my gosh. That sounds so fun. That's a great idea. Yeah, that was good because it was quick. Um, but in the summer, we lay, we're in Salem, so we've got, you know, decent-sized town, decent-sized pack. Um, we try to get all the leaders to plan one event, even if they're planning it at like two or three people planning an event. So we try to offer two or three things every month um, so that because all the families are busy and nobody can make any one particular night mm -hmm. or not everybody can make one particular night. So we try to give them two or three options during each month, uh, including our June pack meeting. And for many years, we did bottle rockets with like the half full two liter bottle. Oh, fun. Uh, full of water that's always and a winner. And launch them. <laughs> um, but our guy that was running that's in the troop now. Oh man. I know. Yeah. Now we got to come up with a new thing. So <laughs> I think we're gonna do the um the June chuck wagon and the pack meeting for our June events. 
and probably a couple other things, but those will be our two big June things. July is summer camp. Mm -hmm. um, and then trying to encourage kids to go to summer camp some other time. We'll do some smaller things. We also try to do a um, capture the flag game. Oh yeah. For kickball. And then some, some hikes and geocaching and things like that. That all sounds like a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah. And if we can, if there's that like sports overnight thing, we would love to hear about that. Yes. Um, information should be coming out very soon on that. We were just finalizing the registration page. Um, but yeah, that's gonna be super fun. I know um, it's it's backed by popular demand because we um, um, we had that event, um, that baseball event last year, but um, there wasn't a planned sleepover. It was just like a one day event, and and just about everybody was like, "Can we camp out?" So this, so we we heard people, and this year it's a camp out. So <laughs> it'll be a lot of fun. Um, the Cubs that got to do it before COVID are probably in troops now. That's true. <laughs> I know that's true. I think, um, I think we're going to open it to all ages too, but, um, I, I could be wrong. Um, I've just heard little details here and there. Um, so that will be really fun. And I love the point that you made Cynthia about having a couple events each month. I think mm -hmm. a lot of folks, including myself, you get stuck on, oh, we're having this one recruitment event on this one night. And like you said, families are busy and they're probably busier now more than ever, especially now that, you know, um, COVID is less of a threat and people are, you know, booking up their calendars and, you know, they might not be able to make, you know, the first Tuesday of the month when you do mm -hmm. that one event. Um, so, you know, don't be afraid on the flyers when, when you guys request them to, you know, have that initial date, but, you know, that's why we added the three other dates that you can fill out. Because if they can't make that one date, then maybe they can make one of the meetings coming up or another event coming up, mm -hmm. um, especially when it comes to the summertime stuff. You know, we can really, you know, let them know a whole list of events, making it easier for them to, you know, hopefully make at least one of them. Mm. That's a good point. You know, don't rely on just one date or, you know, you know, one month out of the year, maybe that, you know, we recruit. We want to really think about recruiting at least on a monthly basis and having at least one event where we really promote and dedicate to recruiting. But really every week we should be prepared to welcome new families. You never know when someone yeah. might come and check out your, your unit. And my other thought was I'm um, trying to get a flyer to the preschoolers for the like graduating preschoolers that are moving into kindergarten. Yes. I, Cause that gets tough when all your preschool buddies are all going to different schools and you don't know the new kindergartners. So um, a thought that we had last year was to try to like host a kindergarten, first grade playground play date craft thing. Oh, that's a great idea. Um, but just, we have like five elementary schools. So never really got that all the way together in time to get the, get the word out. Um, yeah, so like now's the time to do that for this year. <laughs> That's true. That's a great idea. Um, you know, we have these, these kids that, um, you know, like you said, coming into kindergarten and now is a great time because, um, preschools are really going to wrap up soon. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's great to have, I, I love that idea of having, you know, a little fun event or activity for them. And then being able to talk to the, you know, the parents or the, the guardians about, mm -hmm. you know, what they have to look forward to. Yeah, like a K through two play date. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. A lot of the schools they do um like a they've got all sorts of fun stuff. You yeah, know, like a kid like a kindergarten open house or like, you know, yeah. like before the kids start. And you know, if you do have good relationships with your schools, um, you know, maybe you offer them the programming idea, you know, hey, I know you guys do this like school kickoff or like a, a kindergarten meet and greet or a first grade meet and greet. Um, you know, we'd love to provide some programming. I can, I can come with, um, you know, color pages or um, a icebreaker game, right? You know, something to mm -hmm. really help out, um, you know, the PTO or the teachers that plan it, you know, maybe talk to the PTO first. Usually the PTO mm -hmm. are the ones that plan that stuff. And, um, and then that way you're providing a service to them, but at the same time, you're able to um, create that, you know, work on that relationship with the schools and, get the word out about scouting at the same time. Yep. I love that, great ideas. 
Thank you. Thanks for sharing. That's what makes the workshops fun, I feel, is people sharing their ideas because, um, you know, I can give you some ideas, but I don't have all of them <laughs> as much as I try. So, you know, we're talking about summer fun. And as you guys know, um, parades are around the corner. Uh, Memorial Day is coming right up before we know it. And um, we have, you know, events throughout the year, old home days, which have a lot of parades. So I just want to touch on, you know, the safety aspect first. And um, this is um, also available in the guide to safe scouting, but be sure you have enough leaders to supervise. Obviously you want to make sure you have that. Um, so if you have a lot of kids, you don't want just two leaders. You want to make sure you have multiple leaders to watch over, you know, smaller groups of kids. Be sure folks can actually walk the route, make sure everyone's healthy enough and fit enough to be able to do that. Always use the buddy system on any event, including a parade. Make families aware of the moving vehicles and loud noises and animals and make sure that the kids will feel comfortable in that environment um, and that they stay away from, from the animals and the moving vehicles, obviously, in the, on the course. Be sure vehicles carrying passengers have safety belts. Dress for the weather, bring water, wear sunscreen. Do not ride on floats or truck beds or trailers. March away from floats and moving vehicles. Take head counts often. Be sure to always have that first aid kit and always follow the parade rules. Make sure you review, review the rules with the, uh, the organ, organization that is um, planning the parade and uh, make sure you follow those rules, obviously, on, on those days. So um, parades, Memorial Day, like we said, Veterans Day, um, some folks have holiday parades and then old home days, which are coming up this summer as well. You want to contact the event coordinator and you want to, you know, say, hey, we're interested in coming this year and I'd love to hear any feedback from last year. Is there something we can do differently, something we can help with, you know, just to kind of keep that relationship solid and to also just take note if um, there are certain things that maybe didn't go well or things that went over really well. Wear your uniforms, um, class B or um, or A, um, but definitely have everyone wearing the same thing regardless. You wanna look like you're a you know nice solid big group and, and people wanna notice you. And obviously the uniforms will, so whether it's class B or not, will tell them where you guys are from and what your group is about. Um, you know, again, involve the scouts with the planning. Have the have the scouts, whether they're little or older, get older kids. You know, plan and create a float. Or if the float's too big of a project, you know, maybe they all decide on certain signs that they carry. Maybe one person creates a sign with the QR code to your um, unit's Facebook page or um, or website. Um, maybe they make their own banners. You know, maybe you get some felt. And the kids create banner, banners with their own handprints. And then you put, you know, um, you know, Pac-19 on the front or Troop 19 or crew or sea ship or whatever it is um, and get creative with it and really all work together on, um, on, a, on, a, on an idea for the parades. And you'll probably want to start that sooner than later since it does sneak up on us. And then really try to invite all local units or when you're talking to the event coordinator or the parade coordinator, you know, ask them if they personally invited other scouting units or if maybe they'd like you to reach out to other local units in the area because, you know, strength is in numbers with everything and that includes in the parades. So make sure that you're getting the word out to other units and all participating together as a large group. That way folks can really see that scouting is alive in your area. Um, and then, you know, don't forget to carry your unit's flags or banners if you already have them. And then I, this is a little special challenge when it comes to recruitment. I would challenge each scout to hand out five peer-to-peer -peer cards if it's appropriate to do so. Um, like old home days is a great time to do it. The holiday parades are probably a great time to do it. Um, Folks have mixed feelings about handing out things for the Memorial Day or Veterans Day parade. So just use your best judgment with that. But um, challenge them to hand out five peer-to-peer -peer cards each or 10 or two, whatever you think your, your scouts can handle and hand them out to the kids along the route. And then um, that was 
the quick best practices I had for parades. So if you're thinking about banners, if you're thinking about, um, you know, flags and maybe your flags need updating, um, you know, it's already late April. So definitely um, try to think about what you can get done before the Memorial Day parade and get those things updated or have the kids, you know, start getting their creative juices flowing and see what they can create because we all love seeing what the kids come up with, right? So the folks out in the parade route will love to see that the kids actually had involvement and that they weren't just, you know, told to show up, right? A lot of times we tell the kids, well, you're doing popcorn today or you're selling camp cards today or, you know, we need to, you know, post this flyer. But how cool is it if we can include the kids and get them involved in the creative process, you know, kind of teaching them a little bit, you know, age appropriately about marketing and advertising and, you know, and and then just being out there with the community and providing cheerful service as well. So all important lessons to be learned, all fun things they can learn at the same time, being creative and inviting more kids to join them in their scouting adventures. I'd love to hear what you guys do for parades, um, what some of your ideas are, or maybe or maybe this um, triggered an idea for you. I'd love to hear it. You guys gonna leave me hanging? <laughs> Yay, Cynthia. <laughs> I don't want to leave you hanging for too long. Um, yeah, we have a holiday parade in Salem. So we got the um, the pack and the troops to all walk together in that. And when years ago, the one of the troops used to hold all the banners or as many banners as they could for other organizations. Oh, nice. Um, we've kind of shrunk since then. So we're like, why don't we just like stay together and, and be a bigger visible unit with all of us together? Um, yeah, so we had the recruiting trailer come and follow us in the parade. Mm -hmm. That's and that was good too, yeah. Yeah, and we did a float this year. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, the, you can um, request the trailer, um, the mobile base camp, um, unit to um, be towed in the parade. Um, folks can't ride in it, of course, as you guys know, but there's tons of stickers in the mobile mm -hmm. base camp and bookmarks and flyers. So if you are doing the Memorial, Memorial Day parade and you really don't have time to plan for anything, uh, the mobile base camp might be a great, you know, idea um, to, you know, to get to you know, have toad so it's like a billboard, and then we have lots of things that you can send out. If a um, if the mobile base camp doesn't work out for whatever reason, if it's already reserved, or if we can't get it there for whatever reason, um, again, we do have rolls and rolls of stickers. So if you were stuck and didn't really know what to hand out, um, all the kids love the stickers. It seems, and the stickers are bigger this year too, which is a lot of fun. And again, we do have some bookmarks too, um, which is you know nice to have on hand, and they're they're small enough to to hand out. Yeah, they they really liked getting the stickers along the route, and they liked being seen. The kids along the route, um, but kind of what we've observed, especially trying trying to do it from the troop point of view, is so many of the schools and organizations for youth participate in the parade that most of the school age kids were in the parade rather than along the route. That that can happen. I can definitely understand that. <laughs> um, but we did get one family that joined because like the they they saw us three times in the fall and they saw us again in the parade and by the parade she's like okay fine I'll join. <laughs> oh my see then I'll that's the thing over. right it's all about visibility like you never know when or where you're going to get someone or why you're going to get someone to join. But if you keep getting out there, uh, whether it's parades or you're at the local event or you're at old home days with the table, um, mm -hmm. you know, or you're at, you know, another local community event, or even if you show up at the farmer's market or whatever it is, you just never know if people see you and you know that then they know that you exist, right? Like they know that mm -hmm. you're out there and they, they kind of go searching for you, which is nice. Yep. That's excellent. Thank you, Cynthia. That's great stuff. Well, um, 
if no one else has anything to add, I suppose I can um, let you guys go. I mean, we don't have to hang on, you know, unless you'd like to hang out with me longer. <laughs> Tom, did you have something? Thank you. Well, I mean, the parades have always been a big thing and we've been losing interest. So we're, we're trying to get back into it more. Uh, we always used to have a great trailer, uh, a great, you know, uh, float and things like that. Uh, we're working back in together with all the troops. We're doing what we call buddy troops now uh, and buddy packs to get the smaller, uh, the smaller units that are struggling to uh, get together, at least have enough uh, kids to have a good time. That's awesome. I love that. Hey, thank you for all you do, Cindy. Oh, thank you, Tom. You're a rock star. <laughs> I just hope it's helpful and I'd it love to hear is. those ideas. So it always is. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Hope you have a great night and we'll see you next time. Yeah, bye bye. Thank you, Cynthia. Thank you. Bye. Bye bye.